Hello friends and subscribers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Daniel Rosal here bringing you this video tonight from Jerusalem, Israel on the last night of the festival of Hanukkah in the year 5784 in the Hebrew calendar. For those who don't know, there is a Hebrew calendar as well as a regular calendar. Uh, and uh, this is the year we're up to. Just to say at the very top of this episode, I'm recently, I'm being a bit more experimentary recently with the platforms that I use because usually I just put stuff up on YouTube and uh, that's where I think I still have my largest audience. But lately, for reasons that are not clear to me, or I should say is unclear to anyone else as they are to me, I seem to be getting more traction on YouTube, on Twitter, I should say. Twitter slash X. I don't know why that is, but I've been getting... People seem to be... I've heard from folks who are saying, oh, your tweets are getting around. You're on good form lately. And I'm like, it does seem to be that way. I do seem to be getting replies and whatever, you know, other signs of indication that there are on Twitter slash X. And I'm not really doing anything differently than I was before. So I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what happened. Uh, but I think it might be related to the Ireland-Israel stuff. That's my... And I'm pretty sure, actually, that's the explanation. Uh, because there really is very little pro-Israel uh, sort of commentary in Ireland or pro-Israel content. And people keep writing me... Mass I mean, I've gotten a ton of abuse, including death threats uh, from folks in Ireland. So let's just not talk about that today. Let's keep that negativity to one side and I just want to say speaking about negativity I'm going to be turning off my comments on this YouTube video because it's been I've dealt with a lot of negativity this week like I've reached my um, capacity for receiving very negative uh, tweets replies and YouTube comments and whatever and this is actually the first video I've ever done this on if I'm not mistaken I have put comments on review but uh, this one is going to be no comments so no one will be able to uh, say whether they loved or hated this video uh, you're still free to do that by reaching out to me by email uh, but I just need a break tonight from the you know sort of more negative comments that have been coming in from folks um, but getting back to Twitter X I'm going to be putting this up on X just to kind of put a face to my name for, for people and uh, yeah, I've been engaging with the pro-Israel community in Ireland and they seem to be happy that I'm doing what I can, when I can, to uh, to spread the good message of Israel advocacy in that very, very, it often seems, hostile geography uh, to everything really related to Israel. But I wanted to talk today about what's really been on my mind for, I would say, the past weeks. And I, I, it's, I mean, I, there's a ton of commentary about October 7th that I'm reading from all directions from from the casual stuff like my friends writing posts on Facebook to blogs on the Times of Israel and elsewhere and you know there's been a lot of words said in this oversaturated era of content but something I haven't heard discussed so much is the emotional toil of October 7th and I'm not talking about the events I'm talking about the ongoing because okay I'm not a psychologist but this is my this is my take on the matter. There, it, there was trauma in the Jewish world caused by October 7th because it was incredibly traumatic, not just for evoking memories of the Holocaust, uh, but for just the barbarity. And uh, for those of us who've seen the gruesome videos and photos, it's really, really atrocious stuff. But I think there is a... And in a, sense, and in a sense, I believe that's kind of a fixed trauma. It's a trauma that we're moving past because that was a fixed point in time. But I believe there's another trauma that we're seeing and that we're not, it's not even fixed. It's ongoing and it's kind of just day after day. And that's the trauma of watching as the world turns against Israel and the trauma of seeing the rise of anti-Semitism in what we previously regarded as very, the civilized Western societies that didn't really have a Jew problem. Or, you know, I think so many of us really bought into that idea that most anti-Israelism is really just anti-Israelism. And it turns out that, yeah, a significant portion of the anti-Israel stuff is coming from a place of anti-Semitism. Um, so, you know, we're seeing that I've been watching, I've been documenting the anti-Semitic commentary coming from Ireland. I've been trying to raise awareness about it pretty much since October 7th, although it's long predates that. Um, and recently had some success to the extent that you can be successful at this in highlighting a call for Intifada by uh, Richard Boyd Barrett. And that, by the way, has left me really depressed. And I'll tell you why I was depressed by that whole... We, we use a word in Hebrew called parasha, uh, which is both the weekly Torah portion and in modern Hebrew it means parasha, means like a event. Um, this crazy politician in Ireland says there should be an Intifada against Israel. 
I put out a video about that and it went viral. It got one million views and then it was, you know, a few newspapers published the uh, my tweet, you know, or talking about the tweet. And I thought, you know, maybe there is a red line in Ireland. Maybe that was my thinking when I sort of put that up on Twitter. I was like, well, if you just stand up in the middle of the capital city and say, we need to violently destroy a country, which is what a call for intifada is, the Palestinian intifadas were characterized by violence and just, you know, destruction, that surely that is something that merits condemnation for the safety, for, for just even out of concern for the well-being of the Jewish community, who many of them have family in Israel, like my family in Ireland, um, to hear people calling for the destruction. And there was none. That went viral. You know, the news cycle moves on. People still remember that intifada remark. I certainly remember it. But there was no condemnation. Mio Martin kind of said, ah, you know, that shouldn't really be call for violence aren't helpful. But no one stood up. No one had the courage to stand up and say that was absolutely abhorrent and wrong. And, you know, forget about charging Boyd Barrett under hate speech legislation, but just, you know, someone someone in government should have gotten up in the parliament or made a statement, an unequivocal condemnation of calling for Israel to be put down through intifada. And that never happened. And I have to say, I lost an awful lot of respect for uh, for Ireland in the wake of this incident. Um, and people have, have been accused by a lot of people on Twitter lately of being anti-Irish and a hibernophobe. And it's not that at all. I have lots of respect for Ireland. Um, I had mostly a good upbringing in Ireland. Um, I know that there are pro-Israel people in Ireland, which is why I interviewed one of them last week to try to create some balance. But when I say I've lost respect for Ireland, I just mean in in, re, in relation to its treatment of Israel. Um, like, there's kind of no coming back from this incident for me. Um, I really don't have much other to say than I think we should recall the embassy in Dublin, the uh, Israeli embassy, and because, uh, yeah, it's just really, it's at that level of hatred that I put it almost on a par with the Arab world in terms in terms of its open hostility towards Israel. Um, but the, so the, the trauma that I just want to put out about, and I was thinking where is an appropriate forum to talk about this? I've had this conversation with friends, but where where can Jewish people talk about this sort of between themselves? The trauma of watching this rise in anti-Semitism. And as I say, it's not like October 7th, which was a fixed event it is an ongoing trauma. We're witnessing it getting worse and worse by the day. And, you know, I'm seeing it happening in all over the world, in London, the US. Um, and it's very, very sad. The, the feeling I have at the moment really is kind of that the whole world is against us. I've never really felt that way before. Speaking, of course, as a Jewish Israeli. Um, but I've never really kind of, I, I have this feeling now that kind of, you know, I did a video today about the travel advisories from Israel that are in place get into many, many countries. So the official recommendation is even, the official recommendation of Israel is that Jews and Israelis should hide their identity. That was what the National Security Council put out on December 4th in a travel advisory. And, you know, I've never seen that before and I never thought I would see that. Wherever you go in the world, don't speak Hebrew, don't wear a yarmulke, don't wear a Magen David, don't do anything that visibly identifies you as Jewish or Israeli. And uh, first, I think that's a wise recommendation, but it does make me, it explains a bit why I'm feeling depressed right now. Um, and I am feeling depressed. Usually I've, you know, I've uh, been pretty open uh, before, maybe not on this YouTube channel, maybe something I wrote that I uh, suffer from mild depression. I used to be called dysthemia. Now it's called persistent depressive disorder. So I'm familiar with clinical depression as a disease. Um, but even folks who are in clinically depressed and are treated and they're well, and I put myself in that category, thank God, um, we have, there are times when we get depressed by the world, and that's how I felt lately, uh, which is kind of weird, because usually I get depressed by, um, if I get depressed in the colloquial sense of the word, uh, you know, it's by stuff going on in my personal life, like we moved apartments in my wife and I in the summer, and it was pretty terrible experience I would say getting kicked out by our old landlord because he wanted to give ways apart which he was entitled to do but it's still not a nice thing to go through and that had me down for a few weeks like moving on like ripping up the only kind of uh it was really the only place I felt at home in Israel since I moved here the only place I've lived in for more than a year and I felt like I had some stability finally and so that process of 
moving was kind of sucky and a bit depressing but i got over it and i'm you know pretty getting getting there with our new place in terms of unpacking and settling into it um so usually that's that's the depression i get but right now i'm feeling a depression from stuff ex- completely external to my life and that is all this stuff related to seeing the rise of anti-semitism um I've made my feelings pretty clear about all this, where I stand, which is that I think the Jewish diaspora has no future. Um, and I think that all Jews should move to Israel. I really do, honestly. Um, and uh, I think we're at a fork in the road now where some people will and some people won't. But we are witnessing a um, pretty dramatic rise in anti-Semitism. And in terms of the anti-Israel stuff, I mean, look, there's definitely a legitimate strand to the protest right now. Uh, but there is a... Uh, there is certainly a very large element within the anti-Israel movement that is anti-Semitic, and that is just extremely hostile. And I think that's I think that's what gets me depressed when uh, getting exposed to too much of that on X sometimes on the social media networks, on Facebook, on the news everywhere. That whole the world of information, just seeing so much hatred. Um, trivial example, but the be- the something I tweeted yesterday was I was. Um, I did a video about Ethiopian food uh, and I think I put up a tweet saying, oh, I'm doing, I'm interviewing the owner of an Ethiopian restaurant and uh, which I did yesterday. And the guy was like, the Ethiopian Jews, you're white, this, this Israeli propagandist is whitewashing the Israel's mistreatment of Ethiopian Jews. They all live in ghettos. And I was like, no, they don't. And I was just like, I'm sharing an interview about food and like there's people who hate Israel that much. Uh, then he was going on that uh, Jerusalem, there's endemic racism and it's the most racist city in the world. And I was like, I've lived here for 10 years. There is racism in Jerusalem. I know that. There is, firstly, there's Palestinian stabbings regularly, which a lot of don't get reported. And there's racism from the Jewish side as well in the flag parade. I'm aware of all this. But to say it's the most racist city in the entire world and racism is endemic and happens every day, I'm like, it's absolutely not true. So it's just this level of hatred for Israel that I find quite upsetting. Um, it's not the people critiquing the casualties in Gaza, because as I said before, I think that's a legitimate conversation. Is it proportionate? Does it need to be this way? It's not that stuff at all. It's the stuff that is just pure hatred. And I see so much of it at the moment amidst what I would characterize as a more legitimate criticism. So really my uh, my thinking in this blog is that I think that, you know, a lot of folks, including me, are just feeling very saddened by all that. And we don't know what to do with this, right? Because when it comes to anti-Semitism, people say, we need to combat anti-Semitism. And I see so many of these organizations cropping up now, like the Combat Anti-Semitism Movement. They're all well-intended. I'm sure they're all doing important work, but it just feels to me like, that doesn't it's not really that doesn't really help the situation like we're not going to um stop anti-semitism i don't think ever no matter how many organizations we set up no matter how much of this kind of work that i've been doing lately and highlighting it that we do it's going to exist and i think the emotional work i'm not in therapy uh at least at the moment but it is kind of more i think a therapeutic concern is how do we, uh, people who are just feeling this weight and sadness and anxiety, and uh, I, I eventually posted on Reddit, of all places, in the Judaism subreddit, because, again, I was just like, where, I've had this conversation with my friends, but where can I have a broader conversation online about this? And I said, is anyone else just feeling really, really depressed by all this? Like, the not, not about what happened already on October 7th, just about the rise in anti-Semitism and the extreme anti-Israel hatred and just the feeling of like we're I'm living in Israel. We're surrounded by the whole this whole it feels like we're surrounded by this whole big scary world that really hates us. It feels like nowhere outside of Israel is really safe right now. Um and on the one hand I'm happy to be here. On the other hand, that's a very kind of stifling feeling that I've never, never felt before. Ever. Um, and yeah, it's just a heavy, and so I post on Reddit and some guy was like, yeah, I'm like careering down the road to alcoholism. And I was like, all right, all right. That's firstly, that's not a healthy way to deal with this trauma, but, uh, I'm glad someone else, you know, not that I'm glad that someone is struggling with greater use of substances. Uh, but it was, you know, I kind of felt like, oh, okay. So there's other people that are really, really struggling right now with this. And, you know, I would, I would say for me, it's less anxiety, um, my anxiety is more about the war, to be honest. Like, it's more about what direction is it going to take. 
but I also I'm a religious person. I do believe in 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 God. I wouldn't be here if I didn't in Israel. And uh, I think my faith kind of negates that anxiety. I'm like, well, it what what will be will be, and hopefully there's someone protecting us. I'd like to think. Um, but the depression is more what I'm feeling, much more than the anxiety. It's the depression of, wow, this is grim. There's a lot of hatred. A lot of hatred weighing down on us in Israel. This tiny little speck in the Middle East. There's people everywhere who just absolutely hate us. And within that group of people, there's a lot of people who wish that the Jews were gone and Israel were gone. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit scary and depressing. All right, that's my vent for today into the webcam. I just wanted to put that out there. And I, I leave as uncertain as when I started, by which I mean, I'm still looking for answers. Like if anyone wants to drop me an email, do please. Do you have resources? Is there someone who talks about the how we can deal with this emotional weight, this emotional baggage, this emotional charge um, and uh, in a way that allows us to accept it? Because I think that's really all we can do. If we can't get rid of the hatred, we just have to accept that it's there. Um, and of course, put in context that there's also not everyone hates us. But um, yeah, any resources like, I don't know, YouTubers, uh, podcasts. I'm not really picky in terms of how I get the information or the viewpoints. I would just, I'm looking for them as resources to help me and others get through this period. Um, because it is quite a trying one, I think, emotionally for us Jews. And not just Jews, also Israelis, because, you know, there are Israeli Arabs who support Israel. And are likewise really, really saddened and disappointed to see the world turning against us in this way. Uh, all right, guys, that's the end of the video for today. It's been, I think, the first time I've done any kind of video like this, where I just kind of reflect and talk. I'm going to edit this not at all. So by which I mean, there'll be nothing but me. No visuals. Sorry for that. Uh, but yeah, um, and I'll also be putting this out on podcasting apps by which I mean I'll upload this as a podcast as an mp3 file to Spotify and that'll go out to if you want to get it's called the Daniel Rosal podcast and you should be able to get it through Apple Podcasts and Spotify and what have you and whatnot and so forth all right guys I'm going to drop it off here and I'm going to go to the local bar where I will be talking probably about much the same topic with a couple of people not on the internet thanks for watching feel free to subscribe and until next time